An engraved or carved effect is definitely not a must. But when you really need one, try to do it as realistic as you can. In this video, I am going to show you two examples of how to build a realistic engraved wood and carved stone effect in Photoshop. Start with the easy one. Here I already finished some layouts and designs on a wood texture background image. First, let's hide everything else. And I am going to use the same wood texture as the background for this effect. For the engrave, you can duplicate the wood texture image and drag this layer just above the text layer. Then hold the command key or control key and click the text layer to create a selection. Select the wood image layer just duplicated and create a layer mask for it. Because this layer is a perfect aligned with the background layer, so you won't be able to see this layer. But once you try to move the layer around or hide the background layer, you'll be able to see this text with wood texture. After that, you can double click the layer and create an inner shadow layer style. The key is to try to match the light source of the background. Like in this case, the light is on the top right corner, then the shadow should go to the lower left corner. Since this area is kind of engraved, so there should be less light hitting this surface, which means these areas should be darker. So you can create a color overlay layer style. Use black color and change the blend mode to color burn and lower the opacity to around 5%, 10%. Then here comes the key to this method. No matter if it is wood or stone, curved or embossed, the edge of these texts can never be this smooth and perfect. The method I always use to create this randomness and damaged edge require these two steps. Be careful. Before we start, go to the Layers panel. You will have to select the Mask layer on the right. Step 1. Go to the top menu and Filter Gallery. Create a stamp filter in the sketch and a spatter filter in the brush strokes. There are only two sliders for each of these filters. You can drag them around until you find a sweet point that your text get a random edge like this. Step 2. Go to the top menu again and find Filter and Pixelate, then Crystallize. This filter will give you an engraved edge for your texts. As an example like this wood texture, I use the cell size around 7. Since this is the most important part of this effect, Allow me to explain this a little bit more. This is a perfect edged shape. Here is an example of after the sketch filter, spatter filter, and crystallize filter. Take a closer look. This rough edge not only goes into the original edge, but also to the other side. That's the reason why we apply all these filters on that black and white mask layer. So when we use it as a layer mask, we can get the random rough edge not only carved into the original edge, but also on the outside of it. Then, you can add a bevel and emboss layer style. Choose the inner bevel for the style, chisel hard for the technique, switch the direction to down, and highlight opacity to 100%. This should be able to give you a nice highlight around the edge. The last thing I do is try to avoid the texture in the text matching the background perfectly. You can go to the Layers panel, unlock the link between the texture image and the mask. Just drag the image around to get a spot that can separate the text and background the most. For the emboss, most of the steps are the same. Duplicate the texture background, put it above the text layer. Command or Control and click to create a selection, then mask the texture image. And you can always hold the Option key or Alt key. Drag and copy all the layer styles to the new layer, since this one should be embossed. So you can cancel the inner shadow layer style and put multi-drop shadow layer styles to create a realistic shadow for the texts. After that, use the same methods again to create the random rough edges. First, stamp filter and spatter filter, and then crystallize filter. To make sure the rough edges you create are the same, you can use the same parameters as last time. Don't forget to switch the style and bevel emboss to outer bevel and direction to up. Again, unlink the texture image and layer mask, move the image around. Now you can call this a realistic engraved wood effect. 
or the stone, the texture is much more easily damaged in real life. So this method needs a little bit of improvement. First, get your text layer ready and ignore my typo. All the basic steps are the same. Duplicate the texture background, put it above the text layer. Command or control and click to create a selection, then mask the texture image. Multi-layer drop shadow layer style, then a color overlay layer style to make the text lighter or darker as you want. A bevel and emboss layer style to highlight the edge. And you can also use stamp filter and spatter filter to create a random uneven edge first. Now comes the different steps to improve the stone carved effect. First, Command J or Control J twice to duplicate the layer. You can name them as Main Text, Light, and Dark for Ready. For the main text layer, you can try the Crystallize filter first. You can see this rough edge looks okay for the wood, but for the stone, you should know it's a kind of texture that much more easy to be damaged. All the rough edges now are not damaged enough. So let's Command Z or Control Z to go back. And this time, let's use the same crystallized filter, but with a much bigger cell size. Now it looks like the stone is much more damaged. And you can also go to the top menu to find Edit and Fade Crystallize. Give it about 50% opacity. This should give your stone edge a little bit of depth. Then use the crystallize filter again with a small cell size to give the edge some details. Now the basic text with stone texture is finished. I'll call this a 80%. Imagine a stone being carved. Shouldn't there be some large pieces of it falling off? So for the layer we just duplicated, cancel all the layer styles first. Give it a much, much bigger cell size for the crystallize filter. And go to the Layers panel. Select the Mask layer and use Command-I or Control-I to invert it. Then hold Option key or Alt key Click between the light layer and main text layer to create a clip mask. Confusing? Looks like nothing happened. Then select the texture layer and try Command L or Control L to open the levels adjustment. When you slide around to adjust the color, you will find there are some areas of the text are getting lighter or darker. Just like these pieces of stone are missing. And you can change the blend mode to color dodge and lower the opacity to a sweet point. Again, for the other layer. With all the same steps we just used, cancel all the layer style, a crystallized filter with bigger cell size, invert the mask layer, and create the clip mask. This time we use the levels adjustment to make the texture layer darker. Also, changing the blend mode to color burn and lower the opacity will be nice. Everything except the rough edges are still alive at this moment. You can always go back to modify the details. With all these layers, filters together, we can get this realistic stone carved effect. Maybe I give this stone edge a little bit too much of a Photoshop look. But with this method and all the steps we just learned, I'm sure you can get a much better one. I leave these two PSD files in the description for you to have a try. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment if you want any more details. Stay turned. I'll keep creating.